Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a heroic super guide for a giant fin from the League of Explorers. How to take him out in heroic mode with every single hero class and even a deck of basic and common cards only. Now, besides for that last challenge, uh, the strategy is pretty simple and straightforward. Just include tons and tons of AoE because he will keep playing between his hero power and the cheapness of his minions. He will just keep playing minions out and minions out and minions out. They're generally low health and you can kill them effectively with AoE, but there's a lot of them. No matter how many times you clear, he will redraw a bunch of minions. He has his cards that like the five mana one that summons a, bun a bunch of murlocs back. Uh, anything can happen for 10 mana, which summons a whole lot of them as well, etc. So you need to literally have every AoE you can at your disposal and just keep clearing while gradually building up a board that can then punch him in the face. The common and basic card strategy is a bit more complicated, which I'll get to at the end. For now, let's take a look at the more normal strategies uh, for each class. Uh, the other obvious strategy when you're against Murlocs is include Hungry Crab. A cheap, you know, you might do AoE that kills all the Murlocs except for one, and this can finish it off and give you a 3-4 to trade with on the next turn, etc. Let's start off with Druid. For Druid, I went with the Innovate Astral Communion kind of deck. Nowadays, you would replace the Innovates with Wild Growths, since Innovate got nerfed. nerfed. Uh, it's as effective for getting you to Astral Communion uh, on the same turn number, but if you draw it after you've Astral Communion, it still acts as card draw at least, instead of basically being a, uh, a dud like Innovate if you draw it later. Um, so you have a, you know, you want to Innovate Astral Communion and then play out a lot of big minions with Taunt that will get in the way of his Murlocs, like Giant Mastodons, Iron Bark Protectors, Primordial Drakes, which also do AoE and help clean up as does Abomination. Uh, you have your AoE combos like Azure Drake plus Swipe to get spell damage Swipe to deal with the board very effectively. Um, the battle is a little bit easier now since the Murloc War Leader buff. I, I beat it, all these victories and decks I'm going to talk about were before that nerf, uh, but now that Murloc War Leader has been nerfed a little to not give additional health, it helps a bit with the board clearers. Baron Geddon's a good one to have the threat of continuing to do AoE you know, if he keeps playing two health stuff, you can just keep going face with Geddon uh, while clearing his board, which is a pretty powerful combination. Curator helps you draw into your Primordial Drakes, um, not even playing any um, Murlocs, and I don't think there are even any beasts in here. Um, it's just for the Primordial Drakes. They're so important to simultaneously get a taunt out. Um, and uh, do AoE. And then Aviana can let you, if that survives for a turn, can let you um, get out a bunch of minions at once on the next turn, like Yasharaj, uh, some of these big taunts, to really give you a board that even when he, you know, can get through one of the taunts or two with his Murlocs, you still have a bunch of big minions, including Ancient of Wars, to punch him back in the face and seal out the game. And sort of your your emergency button, especially after your Astral Communion, Deathwing's a great way to get a huge threat on board while also clearing his board. Hunter's an interesting sort of combo compared to most of the other uh, decks we'll see today. Uh, Doomsayer's a great early play to be able to clear uh, his board proactively before you get some minions out. But Hunter features a bit more early game uh, just for sort of board maintenance to help you not lose too much life because Hunter's so... Uh, poor on healing. Um, so you have your alley cats, your timber wolves, um, your uh, mad bombers to just help you with that early board maintenance. You have cheap AoE in the form of explosive sheep, explosive trap, mad scientists to pull out your explosive traps, uh, doomsay as we talked about, uh, quick shot just as cheap, primarily as removal for the murloc wall leaders because they just are such a big threat when they are there. You need extra ways to remove them. Dread Scale, the goal is you do sometimes get situations where Murlocs are sort of buffed to 3 health. Um, a, if they haven't been buffed, there's a lot of Murloc Tiny Fins and, you know, uh, Grimscale Articles and stuff which will die uh, because they're at 1 health to this. can also be comboed sort of after running like an Explosive Sheep. If, for, if you have a bunch of those 1 health things which have been buffed with a Cold Light Seer, uh, Dread Scale plus Explosive Sheep, uh, you know, after that's run into things is a good way to help finish it off. Power Shots, some more AoE. Um, Unleash the Hounds, another thing you can combo with sort of Dread Scales or some of these other AoEs. Abomination and Geddon, pretty obvious. 
And then just some late game, uh, Primordial Drake again uh, for AoE. Uh, Faux Reaper is the other one we include there because that can help you just be clearing out things, uh, multiple things at a time when you have finally run him out of cards, but he keeps drawing kind of three-ish per turn. Mage is the same core theme, but the sort of uh, mana cost of the curve shifts it up a bit. You have a bit less early game. You have the Hungry Crabs, the Doomsayers, the Explosive Sheep, the Mad Bombers, but you don't really have things for board control in their own right, like Alley Cats, etc. Uh, you have counter spell can be really valuable to get off against his spells, especially if anything can happen. Um, but even the, if you can counter the five mana spell, that's pretty good. Barriers to buy you life, blocks to buy you life, mad scientists of course to cheat these out. More AoE in the form of volcanic potion. You have your blizzards and your flame strikes, of course. Flame Leviathan's a nice mage card to include in the deck because it can sort of, when you draw it, proactively kill his board and let you play out a minion with, uh, like Faux Reaper without worrying about the fact that you're not killing his minions that turn and taking a bunch of damage. The usual suspects with Primordial Drake and Baron Geddon. As you can see, really just trying to pack in like as much AoE as possible. And finally, Deathwing, your emergency blast everything away. Uh, if you've survived a long time and managed to do a bit of... Uh, damage to him. This can be what eventually just wins you the game by clearing his board, having a threat which can do 12 more damage to finish him off if, uh, you know, maybe if anything, anything can happen, but you're lucky, not, or you have a counter spell up, but if it's there, he doesn't get a charger, etc. You can close the game out. The fun thing about Paladin is that you can play uh, the, the way to potentially do a bunch of burst damage back to him to punish him for all the Murlocs he's been playing. It's very fun to include your own copies of Anything Can Happen, which can help you close out the game towards the end. Um, Tyrion Fordring, a good taunt. Uh, the weapon is primarily to go face, you usually can't afford taking damage from the Murlocs, but sometimes you may sort of in desperation need to kill a Murloc War Leader, which is also why you even have Old Fashioned Hammer of Wraths in here. You have the big Forbidden Healings, which help you uh, potentially if you do have a turn or two of respite if you have like a baron getting out clearing his board you can potentially spend a huge amount of mana on a forbidden healing that gets you to much safer health you have the hungry the hungry crabs to help you get a big threat out while defusing one of his uh, some early game with lost in the jungles to counter those early murlocs on the early turns consecrations abominations avenging wraths Enter the Colosseum can be a very effective form of AoE and kill his whole board. Spike Ridge Steed just buys you a lot of life by having a double taunt. And generally his minions won't have a huge amount of attack. It's just that there are a lot of them. And Faux Reaper again and Primordial Drinks. Priest has a ton of AoE. And we're going to run pretty much all of it. Alcani Circle combo. Holy Smites for some early maintenance. Hungry Crabs to kill those Murlocs that remain after AoE. Doomsayers for early momentum. Wild Pyro to be able to combo with something like Circle of Healing is another activate if he does have one health Murlocs out. Shadow Word Horror can clear his whole board if they're not uh, buffed uh, from something like a Murloc War Leader. Your uh, Excavated Evils, Holy Novas, Dragonfire Potions, Light Bombs. Man, you can just keep clearing and clearing um, and eventually... Uh, eventually outlast either through his whole deck or get you know uh, something out which is doing repeated damage like your Baron Geddon's, your Faux Reapers, your Primordial Drakes. But mostly you're just going to clear him, clear him, clear him, clear him, clear him and incrementally get some reverse damage out of it. Rogue runs many of the same themes. Uh, backstab is a nice uh, extra way to do damage before you do uh, other board clears. Pit Snake, uh, you can preemptively get it out there to be able to take out something threatening. Uh, Betrayal does AoE. Uh, Thelnos to draw and also combo with Fan of Knives, as is Wild Pirates combo with these things. Shadow Strike's great for getting rid of old Murkai's or um, Murloc War Leaders. Dark Eye and Skulker, more AoE. Vanish can be nice because he draws so much, he'll often, his hand will be pretty full. If he does have a big board, uh, you know, Putting the minions back in the hand is not too costly for it to him because they're cheap, but you can actually kill a bunch and get him ready to, uh, when he does auto use his hero power, like overdraw quite a few and mill a few, um, which can help you sort of burn through all of his resources. Though it does take a long time because he does have, you know, a bigger deck than normal. It's not just 30 cards. 
Shaman uses its big AoEs like Elemental Destruction. In a perfect world, you're looking to combo that with Halazil to get a bunch of heal at the same time. You have Volcanoes, which can usually bring down a whole board. Uh, the typical early things like Doomsayers, Explosive Sheeps, Maelstrom Portal, more AoE that you sometimes can combo with Wild Pyro if you need to. The usual Hungry Crabs, Fireflies. Uh, Earthshock can be good for killing like a 1-1 that got buffed by Cold Light Seer or something or uh, neutralizing the effects of an old Murkai or Murloc War Leader if you can't actually clear the board. Uh, and then the usual late game stuff in terms of Baron Geddon, Faux Reaper, Primordial Drake and Deathwing. The other thing, the Fireflies, besides for giving you a bit of early game to, you know, run into like Grimscale Oracles that would otherwise lead to taking a bunch of early damage, you, it also gives you a copy which you can save to be an activator for Kalamos, which can either heal you for a huge amount if you're low on life, or do more AoE to his board. Warlock is what I beat him with at the time of the adventure, so it's a bit of a more old-fashioned deck. At its core, it's essentially a handlock. Um, with Hungry Crabs, because they're just so overpowered against Murlocs, uh, they obviously make sense in this com context. A bit more AoE, you're running your double Demon Wrath, double Hellfire, double Shadow Flame, uh, more than you usually would. Uh, I think this was probably before the time of the um, Abyssal Enforcers, because I think those would probably go in nowadays. Uh, you have your ability to your abilities to heal up with Antique Heal Box, your Sludge Belchers to buy you life, Alex Strada to heal. Your uh, Double Molten Giant, which you're generally looking to torn up with Arguses and Sun Furies. Uh, that way, you know, even if he does get to kill one with his Murlocs on board, you still have another that can keep punching face and buy you life because he'll still have to run into them to clear them. And even though there's a lot of two ofs in the deck, uh, you have a Reno Jackson. If you do sort of get to the outlasting phase where you've been holding on, holding on, incrementally doing damage to him, but taking damage back and you're at a low life total, this can like just heal you back up to full towards the end of the game when you've run out of duplicates in the remainder of your deck to just secure that extra safety you need. The final uh, class that I beat him with is Warrior, um, and Warrior does have a ton of AoE. You have no shortage of options here between uh, Tentacle of Nazoth's a nice extra way to uh, get in some cheap extra damage on there. But you have your Whirlwinds, your Avengers, your Sleep with the Fishers to combo with things, Preemptive Doomsayers, Explosive Sheeps, Unstable Ghouls for even more. Uh, one. You have a lot of ways to deal one damage, so we kind of put them all in to be able to combo them together. Uh, Ravaging Ghouls, Death Spite, uh, the Death Rattle will help you as well. Abominations, Brawls, really good for a full board, get it back down to just one thing. Uh, the As in a ton of our decks, Geddon, Faux Reaper, Primordial Drake, and Deathwing. And King Marsh is another thing. If you pr uh, preemptively get the board sort of at uh, a bit damaged, you can King Marsh to clear it up and still have a big threat out uh, to be able to start punching him in the face. Last but not least, we have defeating Giant Finn with a deck of basic and common cards only. And this is quite the challenge because simply put, classes do not have enough AoE just based on uh, common and basic cards. Um, a lot of the stuff is rare, epic, uh, to really be able to outlast him um, while packing in enough uh, to also be able to get threats out. So the extra thing that Mage has which you can take advantage of is Freeze. What you're trying to do besides for sort of getting in enough AoE over time to keep him at bay and survive is, at, especially at times when he has a full board, freeze his board, um, have something like a Mana Worm that's grown and a Sorcerer's Apprentice out so that you can do cheap, uh, more chip damage at him. Then maybe he does nothing for the turn because his whole board is freezed or there's one spot he plays a Murloc that you know doesn't have charge or something. You freeze the board again and keep pushing a bit more face damage. Uh, you know Maybe he waits another turn, you Flame Strike and can keep chipping in more damage. He periodic, you know, you won't be able to stay in that situation forever. He inevitably will take control of the board because you don't have enough permanent AoE or freeze. Um, and he has charges and qu quick ways to bring back a bunch of minions. So you're hanging on and just trying to do as much uh, safe chip damage as you can and get a little bit lucky to be able to finish him off with flame strikes at the end. It did take me several attempts. Things kind of need to all go right. Um, but as you can see from the screenshot, we did pull it off. So, what's the purpose of the cards in the deck? 
Arcane missiles are primarily to help you in the very first few turns because often he'll have sort of one health things. You can potentially clear out stuff uh, as you go. Mana Worm is one of your bigger threats. You want to get this out and then each time you freeze or play a spell which kind of keeps the board at bay, you're hitting him in the face and it can grow for more and more damage. Mirror Image to protect your Mana Worm and Sorcerer's Apprentice and obviously uh, buy you some life. Um, your Sorcerer's Apprentice, weird as it sounds, are another one of your main sources of damage, but they help you do a lot in a turn in terms of potentially doing something like freeze the board and draw cards to keep your ability to be able to keep going and like throw a frost bolt or fireball at face um, while those all grow your mana worm. The ability to sort of pack a lot of spells into a turn is critical and you do the three damage with your sorcerer's apprentice. Um, then you, a lot of your AoE does one damage between your uh, tentacle of Nazoth, your arcane explosions, your unstable ghouls and your twilight flame callers. So often you want to play something preemptively, it doesn't look like the right AoE yet, but you might just need it to combo with something else that you're playing on the following turn. So you'll preemptively get Tentacle of Nazoth out even when it's not clear you need it, or Unstable Ghouls, etc. Explosive Sheeps are in there as well, sometimes you also need a combo with that. Um, Arcane Intellects, the card draw is critical, the Frost Novas and Cone of Colds are critical for the Freeze. Flame Strike is your best AoE by far, um, and you want to you know, as much as possible, save that for a turn where you have your own minions out which can then push face damage while you clear his board. And fireballs, uh, to give you a, usually you won't quite, I did try this a few times, you won't quite be able to get all the way to killing him with the strategy. It's about delay and chip in damage, but usually it's not quite enough before he completely overruns you. The fireballs can give you that reach you need to be able to finally finish him off and say that you beat Heroic Giant Fin with a deck of basic and common cards only. Good luck out there if you're still to try it. See you next time.